Hello everyone, I am Dr. Anup Chavla and today I am going to be talking about the pest cavus deformity. So we will start off with the evaluation and how to establish a diagnosis and then touch down a bit upon the management of the deformity. So what is pest cavus deformity? So if you look at it, well simply saying what is this? It is an elevation of the longitudinal arch okay so that's uh, like a simple way of defining it but if you look at it well pescavus is not so simple after all well it never ha happens in isolation and there would be other deformities associated with it so it depends upon the cause of the pescavus and the origin for example a pescavus which originates from the forefoot or what we call as anterior cavus might have a forefoot pronation or sometimes even an adduction deformity along with the hind foot varus deformity while a pest cavus that originates from the hind foot might have a calcaneus deformity at the hind foot but what exactly is a pest cavus deformity if you look at the definition well it is actually a plantar flexion of forefoot with regards to the hind foot so it is not just an elevation of the arch but the whole of the forefoot complex gets plantar flex when we are comparing it with the hind foot and as i mentioned it never happens in isolation so now we are going to discuss or talk about uh, the causes of pescavus deformity based upon from where does it originate so the first one would be an anterior pescavus in which the deformity starts from the anterior aspect of the foot or what we call as forefoot. So that itself can uh, also be divided into medial or total anterior cavus deformity. So when we talk about medial, it is generally the first metatarsal which is the culprit. So as you can see in this, the whole of hind foot is normal. So there is no excessive calcaneus uh, deformity or the calcaneal pitch is not increased. But if you look at the first metatarsal, the first metatarsal has plantar flex in isolation while the other lesser metatarsals are in normal position. So when you look at this uh, from the front, as you can see in this, so first metatarsal is plantar flex and that itself is the cause of uh, pescavus deformity while in certain neurological causes it might not be just the medial ray but all the rays that means all five uh, metatarsals are plantar flex so there is a component of forefoot pronation in the first metatarsal as you can see over here so when the forefoot is pronated that itself would also lead to secondarily uh, a hind foot various deformity these deformities may also be associated with metatarsus adductus so in such cases once you know uh, these normally happen as a result of muscular imbalance and once you're able to diagnose these deformities you need to be sure whether the hind foot component is it flexible or rigid so we will be talking about it uh, in the subsequent slides while the other one is uh, a cavus deformity which originates from the hind foot or what we call as posterior cavus or calcaneo cavus. So in this, for example, if you look at the figure A, the calcaneus is uh, has gone calcaneum has gone into calcaneus deformity and there is an increase in calcaneal pitch. So this is what we call as calcaneal pitch so why is the calcaneal pitch increased so normally if you look at the muscles around this area so at the back something which inserts over here is tendo achilles while something which inserts in the front somewhere around here at the navicular 
and also in the first metatarsal is tibialis anterior which is the dorsiflexor of the ankle so if there's an imbalance between the two the tendo achilles is weak then that would lead to a calcaneus deformity and to maintain the four foot tripod the whole of the forefoot gets plantar flex which leads to a cavus deformity so normally it happens in neurological causes like post polio residual paralysis and also in uh, cerebrovascular accidents or stroke so if you look at uh, what are the causes of pes cavus deformity so in fact a high arch foot or uh, some degree of pes cavus will be seen in 10 to 20 percent normal patients as well that means in normal population in fact most of the deformities actually are neurological in origin amounting to almost 70 percent then trauma can be another cause but a cause in which you don't find any known cause is actually idiopathy and this was termed as subtle cavus foot this term has actually uh, been come has come into picture in the recent times and it was described by manoli and graham and these are those cavus deformities which are not really frank uh, cavus and there is no neurological uh, involvement so if you do a nerve conduction study it would come out to be normal So when we talk about causes, I think this is a heavy slide, uh, but we need to know some important causes only. So if you look at it, I think uh, among this, 75% of causes are actually neurological only. So neurological themselves can be divided into a progressive neurological disorder or a static neurological disorder. So when we talk about progressive, the most common uh, deformity or the most common cause of progressive neurological disorder causing cavus is uh, hereditary sensory motor neuropathies or what we call as charcot marie tooth disease so amounting to around 78 persons the other causes uh, are also there which can lead to test cavus which can be uh, hereditary sensory and autonomic neuropathies frederick's ataxia uh, any tumor in the spine or the brain, any problem with the spine, spinal trauma, syringomyelia, spinal dysraphism, then spinal muscular atrophy, myelodysplasia, and muscular dystrophy. Now, when we talk about static neurological disorders, which can lead to a cavus deformity, they include most commonly being cerebral palsy, stroke, and poliomyelitis. But a spinal nerve root injury or peroneal nerve injury by causing a weakness of tibialis anterior can also predispose to a pes cavus deformity. So the other causes include uh, compartment syndrome. So the compartment syndrome by causing scarring of the deep posterior compartment can also lead to a pes cavus deformity. Similarly, compartment syndrome of the foot by causing intrinsic muscle weakness can also lead to a pes cavus deformity trauma to the foot again maybe because of uh, by causing compartment syndrome tarsal coalition rare under corrected ctev well that's also a cause that can be seen in adolescent uh, iatrogenic by an overzealous surgery for pes planus or idiopathic which is subtle cavus foot deformity. So when we're talking about neurological, I think it is very important to understand the pathophysiology of how a uh, pes cavus deformity develops. Specifically, when we're talking about the pes cavus deformity, we're talking about the four foot uh, pes cavus. So, which is also very common in charcot marie tooth disease. So normally in these cases, there is a significant weakness of two muscles. First one is tibialis anterior and the second one is peroneus brevis. So how does weakness of tibialis anterior cause pes cavus? 
we'll have a look at it now. So if you look at this, this is the tibialis anterior, which inserts on the dorsal aspect of the navicular as well as the first metatarsal.